a symbol. So powerful that in the wrong hands it could spell destruction for not just the digital world, but the human world too. A mark to signify a Digimon of intense power or intense danger. On today's video, I'm gonna be detailing and explaining the entire history of the digital hazard. It's come spooked over spectacular too. Some nice friends you got there, YouTube. Welcome back, ghouls, ghosts, and all in between. Thank you for liking and subscribing, and welcome back to the Spooktober Spectacular. And yeah, much like my video from a while back on Dark Digivolution, I wanted to kick off this month of scares by talking about the digital hazard and trying to explain its history. First of all, the symbol itself. The name Digital Hazard makes it obvious what inspires it, the real world biohazard symbol. Biohazard as well as the ionizing radiation symbol. And I think it is a wonderful little logo, a really great merging of the two ideas, as well as removing a lot of the curved lines that make up those symbols, and instead using triangles with straight lines and a circle in the middle. Those triangles evoking things like data triangles and the polygons that make up video game models. As for the meaning of the symbol, it changes from media to media. In Digimon Tamers, our first ever Digimon to bear the hazard is Takato's partner, Gilmon. Of real note here is that Gilmon is created from Takato's drawings, and in those drawings that we see getting scanned, Gilmon does not bear the hazard, which indicates to me that either the Digivice or the digital world or something introduce the hazard to Gilmon. Or because Gilmon was created specifically from Takato's drawings or using a Digivice scan or something, that made him the digital hazard. But Gilmon does have non-tamers appearances where he still has the digital hazard. So maybe it's one of those kind of things where a Gilmon in every universe is always the digital hazard. Some fans have speculated that the digital hazard is kind of similar to like the X antibody in as much that it's like inside a Digimon and changes its body, its biology and its evolution. But we haven't got any firm confirmation of that from any sources, but whether it be because he's an unnatural or special Digimon or because some latent virus latched onto him is never explained. But of course we do know that the digital hazard on Gilmon is a foreteller to his dark Digivolution, Megidramon, which also bears the digital hazard, which flashes red to match his enraged energy. And Megidramon is the threat that could destroy the digital and human worlds, but thankfully Beelzemon was able to overpower him. It's also worth noting that Growlmon and Wargrowlmon also possess the digital hazard on their body, which makes sense, them being evolutions of Gilmon and potentially evolving into Megidramon. But interestingly, so does Gallantmon in Gallantmon Crimson Mode in its Digicore. This at first seemed odd to me because you might assume that a purified or non-evil version of Gilmon and Megidramon might be able to cast off the shackles of the digital hazard but no, I think this shows that the hazard is always with Gilmon, and it's only dangerous if it's used by the wrong people or for the wrong motives. Much like how in real life, radiation and radioactive materials can be of great benefit for humankind, but when used incorrectly or improperly dealt with, could also spell its destruction. Of note also, while not part of Digimon Tamer's canon, Megidramon X and Chaos Gallantmon also bear the digital hazard. In addition, the Gilmon variant, Black Gilmon, Black Ground, Mon, Orange Growlmon and Orange War Growlmon also feature the digital hazard, though this is largely from a design perspective just because they're variants of the Gilmon family. Future Khan here, or the Digimon Kanza. Yeah, we're still working on the title. I also wanted to talk about Gilmon X Antibody, which interestingly does not bear the digital hazard, and that is, according to its reference book, the engraved digital hazard mark has vanished. That is because it accepted and contained its power within its small body. It still hasn't awakened to that power, but if it grows up the right way, it can be said that it's qualities of maturing into a true guardian of the digital world will have improved. So that's very interesting to me and I think harks back to my point about how the digital hazard and the ex antibody work in a similar way, but maybe the ex antibody just gives you more of that boost to kind of rid yourself of the digital hazard. I also want to quickly talk about the zero unit, which is the symbol that appears on Kalumon's head as well as on Gilmon and Black Gilmon and a bunch of others. This is almost like the inverse of the digital hazard and this isn't really the video to go over it, but it does often show up kind of as a matching pair to the digital hazard and there are some theories that they kind of balance each other out, especially as the zero unit shines bright when Kalumon activates shining evolution. 
However, Digimon Tamers is far from the only continuity to contain the digital hazard. In Digimon X Evolution, a digital hazard is treated as an overpopulation event, when the digital world becomes overloaded and requires Yggdrasil to engage Project Arc, the project that activates the X program to delete 98% of all Digimon to fix things. Similar events also transpire in Digimon Chronicle and Digimon Chronicle X manga. I'm actually working on a couple of videos on Digimon Chronicle right now, so look forward to that. In another manga, Digimon Next, the character Yu Inui's hat bears the mark of the digital hazard. Interestingly, his partner is Gaumon, appearing as a partner before it would appear in Digimon Savers. Its line is interesting in Digimon Next as it goes from Gaumon to Gaugamon to Mac Gaugamon to Zed Garurumon, which is a fun choice because obviously in Digimon Savers, Gaumon eventually digivolves to Mirage Gaugamon, and Mirage Gaugamon bears the digital hazard. It's never mentioned as to why Mirage Gaugamon has the digital hazard, it could definitely just be a nod to you from Digimon Next, but then that begs the question, why did you have the digital hazard on his hat? Unfortunately, these are questions we have never and likely will never get answers to, but it is really cool and it does make me wonder if we have Gaumon acting as the kind of counterpart to Agumon in Digimon Savers when normally you would have a Gabumon, if that is considered somewhat unnatural in the kind of multiverse and maybe Mirage Gaugamon having the digital hazard is kind of a in-joke about that, like, oh, shouldn't this be a Garurumon? And the fact that the Gaumon from Digimon Next does become a Zed Garurumon who doesn't bear the digital hazard might be something to do with that, although I think I'm probably reaching there. Moving over to the realm of video games, in Digimon Savers, another mission, known in America as Digimon World Data Squad, as part of Belfamon opening a path to the dark area, video related to the dark area very soon, <laughs> a digital hazard appears on the ground. It is not seen much throughout the rest of the game though, aside from of course on Gilmon Family and Mirage Gaugamon. The digital hazard gets its own dedicated card in Digimon Collectors, and of real interest to me is that in Digimon Masters, the MMORPG, the digital hazard is an actual item, allowing War Graumon to digivolve to Megidramon. The item image for it is just the digital hazard on Megidramon's chest, but I think the idea of the hazard as a consumable item, or something like the Tagon Crests, is a really neat idea that could be explored in a proper story, and Digimon Masters just accidentally stumbled into something pretty cool. And finally, I'd like to cover the last set of Digimon that I haven't mentioned yet, who also bear the digital Digital hazard. The Lucemon line. Lucemon, Lucemon Fall Down Mode, and Lucemon X Antibody. While their reference book listings never make reference to the digital hazard, I think it makes a lot of sense that Lucemon would possess this. Rookie Lucemon is a being of great potential for both evil and good, created when the digital world was still very chaotic. When it digivolves to Lucemon Fall Down Mode, it has powers that rival God. Yeah, that's in the reference book. Lucemon has powers that rival God. <laughs> But Lucemon Fall Down Mode has both the ability to love all things and destroy all things. Again, that theme of balance in relation to the digital hazard, of both advancing and destroying that we see in the Gilmon line. Future Khan here. Lucemon and Lucemon Fall Down Mode also have the zero unit on the other hand, the matching hand, to the hand that has the digital hazard, which again fully plays into this kind of yin and yang power level that we get from the digital hazard and those that bear it. Lucemon X Antibody also bears the hazard, which makes sense as despite being Lucemon's X Antibody, not Fall Down Modes, it shares a lot of reference book details with Fall Down Mode. The X Antibody giving it even greater godlike powers. I quote, having gained the ultimate wisdom and power to do absolutely anything at will, Lucemon reigns in the digital world as an incarnation of destruction and creation. Scary stuff, and it really does make Lucemon feel like the big threat he's made out to be in the anime and video games. And definitely definitely deserving of bearing the mark of the digital hazard. Well, that's the history of the Digital Hazard, one of, I think, the most enduring and interesting symbols in the Digimon multiverse. Despite not being actively used as a plot point in many years, and still to this day never fully being explained. This is an explainer video, so I didn't want to go too much into fan theory here, but do let me know in the comments your thoughts and fan theories on the Digital Hazard. For such an important part of Digimon history, the actual list of Digimon who bear the hazard is very small. I'd also like to thank Wikimon, the Digimon Wiki, and DMO Wiki, who were invaluable sources when I was researching this video, so thank you to them, links 
links in the description. Strap in for the rest of October as Khan Spooktober Spectacular brings more frightening videos to your YouTube device of choice. And let's thank my spine tingling channel members. My sovereigns! Thank you to Andrew Sobel and Night12. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much for being sovereigns. I'll let, I'll let you take it easy on being sovereigns for the rest of October, although maybe see you again for my birthday. <laughs> Knight once again didn't have a message that he wanted to say. He said, hey, again. And then Andrew wants me to say, the fitness gram pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. The 20 meter pacer test will begin in 30 seconds. Line up at the start. The running speed starts slowly, but gets faster each minute after you hear the signal. Ding! A single lap should be completed each time until you hear this sound. Ding! Remember to run in a straight line and run as long as possible. The second time you fail to complete a lap before the sound, your test is over. The test will begin on the word start. On your mark, get ready. Ding! <sighs> People giving me money to make my life difficult, you love to see it. <laughs> And the Digi Destined, Anthony Bontamassi, Reese Williams, Sad Uncle Callum, and Crimson Dragon Slayer. Thank you so much, Digi Destined. And the Tamers, the Blessed Rain, Errant Harpy, Emily, Mike McNulty, and Theo Navarro. Thank you so much, Tamers. And to everyone in the Khan Club, thank you for supporting the channel. We hard earned money. Hope you're enjoying these early access videos. And I'll see you next time when we go digital. I don't know what that was.